Hello and welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me. I am in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. I'm Paul Lucas and today I'm flying Azerbaijan Airlines in economy class on their Boeing 767. I'm off to Istanbul. Come join me. Baku Airport has to be one of the most unique pieces of architecture you can pass through as an airline passenger. Both terminals are equally distinctive and different from one another. Today I'm travelling from Terminal 1, which is where Azerbaijan's international departures are handled. The unique design continues inside. It's a really interesting and unusual space. This airport is quite unlike any other I've been to. Check-in for Azerbaijan Airlines is on the ground floor. There are some check-in kiosks where you can print your boarding pass, but if you do have checked baggage like I do today, you'll still need to drop off your bags at the manned check-in counters. If you don't have lounge access and you're still looking for something to eat or drink landside, there's McDonald's and a proper coffee shop which are located on the mezzanine level. Passport control and the departures level is located upstairs on the first floor. Again, the unique design continues here. All of the spaces are broken up with these weird half-shell pod things. They contain everything from cafes to children's play areas. And there are also some sleeping pods which I noticed. I wonder how often they get used. I'm not sure how many people actually connect here in Baku. There are several business class lounges upstairs on the top floor of the airport. Now, as I've got an economy ticket, I'm not able to get into Azerbaijan Airlines business class lounge, but there is a priority pass lounge and I'm using my priority pass card to access it today. In contrast to the rest of the airport, which left a massively positive impression on me, this lounge is rather underwhelming. Nonetheless, you're able to get a half decent breakfast here and a cup of tea if you want. With about 40 minutes to go until departure, it's nearly time to board and time to head to the gate. This is our aircraft today, a Boeing 767-300 of Azerbaijan Airlines. This is a wonderful livery, by the way. I love Azerbaijan's blue color scheme. Let me know what you think of the livery in the comments below. Also on the apron is an Embraer of Buta Airways, which is the low-cost subsidiary of Azerbaijan Airlines, which serves domestic and secondary international destinations. Shortly it's time to board, and for those of you who are new to this channel, I recommend that you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, where I give live updates on all of my trips. Economy class on this Azerbaijan 767 is in a 232 configuration. I've always liked the 767 because airlines aren't particularly tempted to cram more seats into the back than it can otherwise withstand. If you're traveling on this aircraft, you may want to avoid the last rows on the window sides. There is no window here. The width of the seat is perfectly fine and the legroom is pretty generous too. I'm not sure why all this fabric hangs down from the seat pocket. There's a good six inches between my knees and the actual seat. Shortly before takeoff, the cabin crew pass through the cabin and hand out some boiled sweets. This used to be a pre-flight habit back when I was a child, but the practice seems to have almost died out amongst mainstream airlines now.
see us cover the 1,112 miles to Istanbul at 36,000 feet and it'll take us around 2 hours and 20 minutes. The 767 is an older aircraft so it's always positive to see USB charging points that have been retroactively installed on them and yes, they do work. Let's take a quick look at the in-flight entertainment on board. There is of course a moving map and flight details screen and there's also a selection of TV and films to watch. I think it's important to remember that the main market for this flight is people from Turkey and Azerbaijan connecting between those two countries. For the Western viewer, there isn't really a great deal to whet the appetite in terms of TV or film. Overall, however, I was pleasantly surprised by the condition and quality of the cabin. They even have individual air vents above the seats. Now that's something that doesn't actually come as standard on new build aircraft, would you believe? One of the great highlights of flying this route is that it travels directly over some of the Caucasus mountain range. This remote and inhospitable region is utterly spectacular from the air. It's a real treat to be travelling over these for over half an hour. One of the drawbacks of travelling over such mountainous terrain is there is occasional turbulence, but in my view, no pain, no gain. About an hour after takeoff, breakfast was served by the crew. Now, I'd already had a small breakfast in the lounge before I departed because I had read some rather negative reviews of Azerbaijan's catering. Overall, I thought this was pretty nicely presented and I really love the 50s feel that that lovely blue tray gives to the whole setup. Again, I think it's important to remember there aren't going to be many Western Europeans on board a flight like this and therefore the catering isn't done towards our sensibilities and preferences. However, I was keen to see what was under the foil and to be honest, it's not good. As far as I can tell, this is some sort of poultry sausage, baked beans, which were the size of butter beans, and a very strange cheese and potato bake. The most diplomatic thing I could say about this breakfast is, it just wasn't for me. The meal service concluded with a cup of coffee, which is served along with some sweets and some packaged nuts. The coffee wasn't bad at all, and I have to say the crew on board this flight were pretty good. They were smiling and friendly and approachable, and had no problems at all with only speaking English. Azerbaijan Airlines also has its own in-flight magazine, and this one was particularly interesting for me to read. Firstly, I was quite surprised at the extent of their route network, which you can see here on this map. One place I'd really like to fly with them is New York. They use their 787 Dreamliner on this route, and the fares can be pretty cheap from New York to Baku. Most of the tourist-oriented articles are written in English, and this is a particularly interesting one about Azerbaijan's largest national park. I guess the articles that are written only in Azerbaijani have a more local relevance only. Soon we're descending into the Istanbul area. Now Istanbul is a vast metropolis, around three times the size of London, and this is something that you often can't appreciate until you view the city from the air. I was excited to catch a glimpse of Haida Pasa Station, which is on the Asian side of Istanbul. From here, the historic and evocative Trans-Asia Express used to serve Tehran in Iran. Unfortunately, that service is no longer, and the station is currently closed for renovations. So to sum up, I really enjoyed my flight with Azerbaijan Airlines. Sure, the food wasn't too great and the aircraft is an older one, but there's always a tremendous novelty in flying one of these unusual carriers. This flight cost me 105 pounds one way. That's around 120 euros. The value isn't too bad considering there aren't many carriers competing on this route. And of course, you still get a breakfast, even in economy class. Now that's an aspect of service which has pretty much died out among most European airlines and the ones in North America too. I'll wrap things up here. Please leave a comment below, especially if you like the video. Give me a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing to the channel for more content just like this. For now, thanks for watching and safe flying.